I'm Evan Wren, and this is the Big Country Preps Wednesday Night Podcast, our weekly look at the area athletic scene, what happened last week, and what's going on this week. You'll notice that it's Tuesday night. We've got another Tuesday night edition, uh, a special edition due to the Boys State Basketball Tournament, uh, which is taking place in San Antonio this week. Uh, our teams are getting underway on Thursday, but they're already on their way down there for their shoot-arounds tomorrow. So we're going to have our uh, Wednesday night podcast tonight to benefit the fans that are going down there, are in transit, to give them the chance to see this, uh, a little easier chance anyway. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood, via Zoom, Dan. Tonight, we've got Ryan Bleicher. He's going to join us live from San Antonio. Uh, the Jayton Jaybirds have already arrived down there, getting ready for their shoot around tomorrow. Yeah, Coach Bleicher uh, has the the Jayton Jaybirds back to back at state for the fourth time in the last uh, six years. They they are he's got that program absolutely rolling. They've uh, have two runner up finishes. This they're going to go for their program's first state championship this year and what's going to be a a really interesting class 1a state tournament for big country fans uh we've got jayton down there we've got benjamin down there we've got gordon down there so three of the four teams are teams uh within the big country preps coverage area so there's gonna be a whole lot of interest on our end uh in, in how that one turns out but it's gonna be fun to talk to coach bleicher about his squad and what it's up against uh and, and i'll tell you what it's gonna be a fun week uh just following this tournament, this is going to be a really, really exciting tournament with a lot of really good teams uh, and just a lot of fun basketball. Well, I mean, the, the other side of that bracket with uh, with two big country teams, Gordon and, uh, and Benjamin going at it is really going to be an interesting matchup. There's uh, we have Grayson Rigdon, who is the nation's leading scorer at over 46 points per game, uh, leading Benjamin. And then we've got. Uh, a Gordon team that is loaded with sophomores. It's a sophomore heavy team. They were really good last year as freshmen. Mm -hmm. This year as sophomores, they've been good enough to get all the way to state. They knocked off Grayford uh, last week, the top ranked team in the state. Uh, they're on a roll and they're going to go uh, against Benjamin early in the morning, 8:30 at uh, the Alamo Dome. 8:30 in the morning. That's going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting matchup uh, that, because that that Gordon team, I think we maybe slept on them a little bit. They they're really playing well. Yeah, I, th I think we knew Gordon was going to be really good after making their first ever uh, region tournament trip last year. But they still, we in, in region three, you've got to go through the two-time defending state champion Grayford uh, uh, Jackrabbits. And I think we probably didn't necessarily expect them to get through that test, but they won that game in overtime, took a huge step forward, and now we're playing their, their first state uh, tournament, uh, making their first state tournament appearance. But you mentioned it, uh, four sophomore starters in, in that starting lineup, uh, led by Riley Reed, who's just a really good player. Striker Reed's another one. Aiden Shank, just a lot of really good young players on that team. The challenge for them, obviously, will be how do you slow down Grayson Rigdon? That's something that not a whole lot of teams have done this year. But that's going to be a really fun matchup uh, to see who gets a state from that group as well. So uh, we, we will definitely be paying attention to, the, to those semifinals games uh, leading up to that championship matchup. Absolutely. Absolutely, and to illustrate how athletic that Gordon team is, uh, of the you know of all, you know they've got all three uh, of their uh, state relay teams back, and it's involving pretty much their starting lineup of the basketball team. These guys could win potentially be on the medal stand three times at the state uh, at the state track meet as well in the relays. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. Uh, I know a lot of times people kind of look at that Benjamin team, and and, and Grayson Rigdon obviously gets a lot of of credit and, and a lot of attention, and, and deservedly so. I think he's the nation's leading scorer this year, averaging something like yes. forty seven points a game, uh, which is insane. But I think that the thing, having seen that team at the region tournament. Uh, that impressed me, and this impressed me last year with them too, honestly, is they've got some really good role players around him that, that really do what they ask them to do. That press is, is tough to break. If you can't break that press, they're going to get lots of fast break points. Yes. Uh, and then offensively, they've got some other guys, Jules uh, uh, Pugai, the, the the guard on the on the, the forward, sorry, on the, the wing that can really knock down some threes. Uh, I mean, they've got several, several players out there, several uh, uh, role players. Keegan Hayes, just a freshman, another one who's going to be a really good guard for them. Uh, so they've got some some talent uh, around Rigdon as well. It's going to be fun to see how that matchup works because it works out with Gordon because I think Gordon's got a, a really good, balanced, deep lineup too. So it's going to be, I, I think, uh, a better game than probably a lot of people expect. Because of uh, Rigdon's talent and his ability to penetrate uh, defenses, you really uh, all you need to ask the Benjamin players to do is take care of the basketball, do a decent job on the glass, and hit spot up jumpers. I'm with, with they hit the open looks because he's going to find you for open looks. Uh, when the the defense collapses on Rigdon, there's going to be people open. So if you can knock down open jumpers and take care of the basketball and just do a decent job on the boards, 
you, you're going to really be a tough out. And here, here we've got them. And they've got exactly that. They've got guys that can take care of the basketball. They put it in the four corners the other day uh, uh, against Eula in the in the region uh, in the regional championship. I was impressed with their ability to run that offense. It wasn't just Rigdon with it. He, even when he was out uh, because he had a, a bloody nose there for a, a bit and in foul trouble, they took care of the basketball very well. They got about two or three, you know, pretty dang good athletes on that ball club um, that can that can take care of it and let the air out when he's not out there. What's interesting? They did the same thing against Erion County. They did it. They did it up by one. They did it down by one. Where they they probably ran off two and a half minutes of the fourth quarter, and I thought they were crazy when they were doing it uh, with a deficit, but it worked out really well. They got their layup and finished on a run. But yeah, they have a lot of guys who take care of the ball really well. So uh, yeah, that, that's that's uh, obviously a good team. They're making their second straight t- uh, trip to state as well. They and Jayton both. So, uh, but there will be a new champion. Now, like we said, Grayford, the two time defending champion, got knocked off by Gordon. So so we're gonna have a uh, a new champion this year, uh, and it's gonna be fun to see who that turns out to be. And, that's All right. and before we get going with Coach Blacker, we need to thank some of our sponsors. We'll uh, start with For the Love of the Game Broadcasting and our old friend Terry Slavens, owner of KLX 93.5 FM out of Breckenridge, KATX 97.7 FM out of Eastland, Classic Country AM 1330 out of Graham, 94.7 FM KWKQ out of Graham, KRWL 1430 AM out of Breck, and KWBY 98.5 FM out of Ranger. That is For the Love of the Game broadcasting also, also rob durham sales consultant at bear chevrolet buick cadillac up in breckenridge if you're in the market for a vehicle new or used give him a call he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet call him at 254-559-2266 that's rob durham at bear chevrolet buick cadillac in breckenridge also we want to remind you youtubers to please hit the subscribe button and then after that hit that little bell so we get notifications each and every time that Big Country Preps comes up with a new podcast or video. So please hit both of those buttons, won't you please? We appreciate it. And with that, it looks like it's just about time uh, for Coach Bleicher to join us. And it looks like he's ready. Are you ready to have him on? Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And joining us now, Jayton Boys basketball coach Ryan Bleicher. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate y'all having me on. All right, Coach, uh, four trips to state. In six years, uh, tell us what got you back there this year. What were the big keys? Well, I, I felt like at some point in our year, we felt like we were an offensive team and we were scoring a lot of points. And that kind of is different than what we've been in the past. Um, I, I did. I am a more defensive-minded guy just naturally. And I felt like maybe through the first two rounds of the playoffs, you could tell that maybe our defensive intensity wasn't there. And I don't, it wasn't anybody's fault. I just think they felt so comfortable that they could score so much that maybe uh, every defensive possession didn't matter like it had to us in the past. And uh, the last three playoff games, I, I really think our defense is what got us there. We've kind of got back to being who we've always been and, holding text line in the forties, you know, that that's extremely hard to do. So while, while this team can score, I think being the defensive intensity and, and that we have has really led us the last three games. And Evan mentioned the success y'all have had. I mean, you know, basically lived at the regional tournament, uh, four trips to state now. Um, just how, as the head of that program, uh, have you dealt kind of with with managing expectations, with managing playing uh, as a favorite with that target on your back? What are some things that maybe you've had to uh, do just to, program-wise just to get your team accustomed to, to playing in that situation? Yeah, you know, I think we, we knew this team and we have this expectation every year. So um, a, cu- a couple of different things. So one thing, the biggest thing for us is scheduling really difficult uh, with that, that is absolutely number one for us. Um, whether we, we play, you know, level and Sweetwater both made the second round of the four, a playoffs out of Lou third round of three, a. So, so we've really, we'd go to a travel tournament out in East Texas. Uh, so we really try to schedule three A's four A's as much as we can to get us ready for here. Um, in, in terms of managing, you know, kind of the expectations of that, uh, you know, I never want the kids to take for granted what they're doing. And I think that's the biggest concern that I have with us and our success is they either just assume that they're going to get to the regional tournament uh, or they 
or they just take it for granted. And to me, that's one of the worst things that we could do is, is just, Oh, it's just a regional tournament. Like that's what we try to focus on is, and, and I know it's cliche, but we, we really do try to go game by game. But when we hit those marks, we really try to celebrate them. And I, I don't want them to ever just think, Oh, it's just another regional tournament. It's just another, this, another, that, um, I really want them to understand what they're doing on this path. All right, Coach, one thing I'm curious about with all these trips down to state uh, is where you guys are at in the awe factor of being in the Alamo Dome. I would ex expect by now uh, your kids are pretty comfortable going, you know, going there. Yeah, and I, I love that. You know, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, you know, our seniors were talking the other day. You know, they, they were managers here. You know, they obviously came last year with us, and then they were managers here when we went with our other trips. Um, so a lot of our kids have been here, you know, three or four times. Um, my son's a freshman, obviously he's been with us all four trips. Um, so I think that's a, a really big deal. I, I don't think, um, we can just rest on that, you know, and, and say, well, we've been here, we'll be fine. Uh, but they've been through some battles down here too, which I think that's maybe just as big a deal as playing in the gym, uh, they know what to expect, but but honestly, it is maybe as ridiculous as it sounds. Like tonight, like we kind of know where we're going to eat, we know what we're going to do. That makes life much easier for me. Uh, just hey, we're going to go eat this restaurant. We're going to hit this restaurant, and we, we know bus parking's easy. We know it's easy to get there. Like it just takes a lot of the stress out of the trip. And as much as we want to admit it, when I'm stressed, they can feel that. So. Uh, I think that is a really, really big deal, being familiar with not only the gym, but also the surroundings, the areas, things like that. And uh, y'all opened the state tournament with the with a Fayetteville squad that's had a lot of success this year. Just kind of what are your uh, thoughts on this group and what are going to be some keys to, to getting through them? Yeah, you know, they're really athletic. Um, they really push a the ball. They're fast, they're quick, they're physical. Uh, I think the biggest key to our game is keeping them – on, on defense, keeping them in front of us, we, we have to get back. Um, you know, we really do like to crash the offensive boards, um, but that we may have to do something a little bit different because they're going to sprint back hard. They're going to get the ball up. They're going to hit to the corners as fast as they can and try to go get a layup before our defense is set. So, you know, we, we'll have to make sure that we really transition. It does help that we play text line on Saturday, who is kind of the same, same type of thing, a guard-oriented team. Uh, that really love to get the ball up, push, and, and go. So uh, I love the fact that we got to play a team like this. It's very similar on Saturday. And and uh, you and I talked about this after your win over text line the other day. Just what a good job your team did of attacking the basket, getting points at the rim. This your team, you're blessed with a lot of guys capable of doing that, of getting to the rim and finishing. Just how important is that in a situation like this, where you're in a big gym and, and jump shots can come and go? Yeah, you know, it, I think a lot of people talk about that. You know, they talk about the lack of how people don't shoot great in this gym. And we've had years. I felt like last year maybe a little bit was a year where we relied on the three a lot. Um, you know, in, in our win against Tech Line on Saturday, we we made one. Uh, th this is a team that can shoot it, and they can shoot it really well when they do. But when they focus on getting inside – um, it, it's nice to be able to win multiple ways. And that's what makes, I think, this team so special is that they can win several different ways and they can hurt you. Um, and I, I loved what we saw at the regional tournament. I loved the attacking mindset, getting inside in the paint, drawing fouls, and, and shooting an extremely high percentage in both those games. Uh, so I, I love that mindset, and I know that we, we have talked about we've got to keep that mindset going forward. Coach, talk about your defense. You uh, you had spoken about um, maybe losing sight of your defensive identity. Where are you at now heading into uh, the Alamo Dome? Oh, we're all in on the defensive identity. And I'll be honest with you, like, like I even got caught up in it a little bit. I liked the scoring the points, and I thought that was fun. And, and you can do both. I'm not saying you can't do both. But um, – we are we are full in on the defense right now. Like the kids are are really focused on that, and they they kind of have taken us back even five to six years. Um, you know, twenty twenty, those teams that got here uh, were very much like those teams defensively, where 
they would just as soon hold their guy scoreless, you know, as opposed to just go score 20 points. Like they take a lot of pride in that and, and holding the guys that they're scoring uh, down. Uh, so defensively is I've been really, really happy with what we've put on the floor the last two weeks. And y'all enter the, the state tournament off a couple of gut check wins at the region tournament, a couple of tough wins where you had to execute late. Just how much does something like that do you think help help a team? Because that's those are generally the types of games you're going to be playing in San Antonio. No, and, and that's awesome. The Will Dorado game, you know, it, it got it got out of hand. <laughs> I think we were up 19 at one point, and then I look back and we're up five. Uh, so the stress of us, I think we went eight or eight or nine of nine down the stretch from the free throw line in a game that we were – you know, really comfortable. And I'm sure a lot of people thought we had wrapped up and um, they, they just start hitting threes. So the fact that we had to go to the free throw line, we had to make shots and it, it was a pressure packed situation because you guys know how it is. Like that ball starts rolling, bad things start happening. You turn it over, they hit a three, they hit another three. You know, it's really easy to, to, you know, lock up and, and panic and things like that. And I love that they didn't do that. Uh, the text line game is just an intense uh, – you have to be your best every single minute of the game. Uh, it, you are there. It's a really fun game, a big environment. And um, that, you know, I really do think that's going to pay off down the road down here. Coach, we understand that you have to take care of your own business and and, and worry about what you have to do down there. But I was curious about what uh, what your thoughts are, if any, on the fact that we've got three big country teams down there. Playing for a yeah. state championship. What What are your uh, thoughts on that? Well, you know, all of us are in Region Two next year, so <laughs> so I don't necessarily love that fact of it. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, usually it's you get an East Texas school, you kind of get a Metroplex school or a Fort Worth area school, and so it's kind of cool. And then having the ties with Gordon uh, that we have, coaching with uh, Coach Reed at Rule for so long, and. Uh, um, being really good friends with his family and his kids and stuff like that. But it does make it extremely unique. And, uh, you know, Benjamin's just down the road and we played him in football. So this is not what you're used to. You're used to playing people that you don't have a whole lot of connections with or, or maybe things like that. So it is, it is really unique and uh, it's a really cool for, for the Abilene area. All right, coach. Um, you've got a, a scouting challenge. I mean, you have to worry about Fayetteville first. But in the event that you win, you have to do burn some midnight oil and 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 study uh, either Gordon or Benjamin. Or, well, actually both. What what how are you going to handle this? What's your, what's your so this kind of how we handle this at the regional tournament? We'll do it the same way. You know, Coach Chandland it, it does a great job for us. He's and and Coach Chisholm, our girls coach, he, he's with us. And you know, those two will will watch the game before. And, and they'll they'll scout as much as they can, and I, I honestly will not worry about it. We'll worry about ourselves and going through the through everything. But what makes a state tournament a little bit easier is at least you have a day in between. So we we have a day in between. We can go shoot around on Friday. We can kind of get ready. Um, we can have a couple different film sessions at the hotel, and, and really, it's so much easier because that regional tournament game, you're playing. You know, we played at two thirty. We're turning around. We're playing at two o'clock the next day. The kids are tired. We go eat, and you just have to cram. And our kids are really good about that. Like they're they're really good about watching film, and and they're really good. And not all teams are like this. Every team's a little bit different. Our team's really good at being able to watch it on TV, and then saying, "Okay, this is what we have to stop. This is what we have to adjust to." So for us, it's really. I'm not going to say it's not a big deal because it is, but the way our kids learn and the way they are able to process from film study and things like that, they really do make it a lot easier. With that, Coach, we want to thank you for your time. We know you're a busy guy, uh, and you have some film to study tonight, so we're going to go ahead and let you get to that. And best of luck to you, and we will see you down in San Antonio in a couple of days. All right. Appreciate you all having me on. Always enjoy it. And that was Jayton Boys basketball coach Ryan Bleicher. Uh, I, I think it shapes up as a, a fun little foursome in, in class 1A. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I don't recall being more excited for uh, the 1A end of it in a long time. Having three of our big country teams down there, we have an excellent shot at uh, taking a state championship. I have a good feeling we're going to do it.
Yeah, I do too. I think you got, uh, especially considering that you've got the two uh, most experienced state teams down there with Benjamin and Jayton both having made appearances last year. Jayton dang near knocking off Grayford for the title last year. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a really fun, uh, a really fun uh, just one A tournament, and uh, and and it's going to be really fun uh, to see how it, how it plays out. But uh, I was really glad we were able to get Coach Bleicher on. I know you and I have talked personally. Uh, uh, just had a lot of, of conversations over the years and over the past couple of days, just about what a job that coach Bleicher has done at Jayton. It is, it is truly remarkable when you look at what he, the program he has built uh, there. I mean, four, four state appearances in, in six years. Uh, if, if they could not get their first uh, state championship this year, that'd just be a, a massive accomplishment. Obviously uh, it's going to be fun to see if they, if they're able to accomplish that. Four state appearances in six years and nine regional appearances in 10. Yeah. Uh, has anybody done a better job? No. You know, that's, <laughs> that that's, dude has, uh, I tell you what, he has built the program and he could have his pick of the litter if he wanted to leave, but mm -hmm. I, he really enjoys Jayton and yeah. uh, it's been a real blessing for the folks in Jayton. Yeah. One thing that's kind of neat, and I've, I've, I've said this to you a couple of times, is that it, what's really neat to me is that Jayton, he's gotten Jayton playing, uh, Almost like, I mean, at the 1A and 2A levels in, in our area, you see a lot of programs that don't have football programs that are basketball-only programs. As they, call them. they have other sports, but they're, but they're basketball-first programs. And those programs usually have a leg up. And he's kind of built that type of program at Jayton where they have – they not only have a football program, they have a really good football program. So he's got he's got players playing deep into the football season, and then he's got them making routine regional and state runs. It's just, uh, it's just really impressive what he's done. They've got a good athletic program. I mean, the girls' basketball team, both their track teams are are pretty salty. Uh, that's just a good – now, they have a limited number of teams uh, in their athletic program, but the ones that they do have are are good, generally very good and consistently good. Yeah, definitely. So uh, glad we could get Coach Bleicher on. Uh, great conversation, and I'm looking forward to see how this team plays out there in San Antonio. And with that, it's about time to close the books on the Big Country Preps Wednesday night podcast. But before we do that, we want to remind you, we've got three separate subscription packages here at Big Country Preps. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual six-month subscription where we knock that price down to four bucks a month. And then we've got an annual 12-month subscription where we knock that price down to three bucks a month. And that's the best value, 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School athletic coverage. We'd also like to remind you that if you ever see a photo you like in any one of our galleries, those are available for purchase. We have photo downloads available for $7 as well as some keepsakes and prints. So make sure you check those out. As you scroll through the site, you'll notice pretty quickly that we uh, take a whole lot of photos from these games we're at and that we try to make it to a whole lot of sporting events over the course of the school year. That is something that we really enjoy doing and something we are very proud of here at BigCountryPreps.com. All big country, all high school, all the time. Welcome home. <laughs>